Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House Escape, back with some more of Huntinality. Let's go to Washington Post. Waluigi tried to start his own newspaper, but according to the Chicago Manual of Style, it looks quite poorly arranged. Okay, I'm guessing I have to look that up. Let's see what else we have on the puzzle page. Definitely long newspaper article. It looks like maybe six panels, and we need to extract letters of some kind down here at the end. But um, first we should probably just read through it. We should also take a look at the Chicago Manual of Style and see exactly what it is we're doing. Dear Mrs. Hippie, you'll feel pure misery if you don't immediately approve a big loan to me. Look, both of us know I'm just amazing. You see, a nice stranger on the roadside from Columbia once told me this idea. So if you somehow still think loaning to me is not a good idea, then you're in denial. Thanks for your consideration. Wow. I'm not entirely sure what I just read. <laughs> There's definitely italic words, right? There's like misery, denial, tenacity. I'm sure the, the italic words are potentially important. Frasier, they, they definitely feel important. Otherwise, there's there's the general tonal things like busyness. Um, I feel like maybe I'm supposed to figure out who's writing these letters. I feel like that's potentially important. Dear Miss Romanoff, like an acute pain in the LAD region of my heart. Man, I got this awful issue with a pointy hairline, and I swallow eight crawly things full of venom while I sleep yearly. So come on, the smell is quite bad too. So my office pal Pablo has now started to refer to his working hours as Pablo's gloomy period. <laughs> Thanks for your consideration. Okay, <laughs> Romanoff is a name that I recognize from Marvel. It looks like we only have four four letters here. And I noticed there's four sets of blanks at the bottom. So maybe each article is in some way giving us one of those words at the bottom. We also have Italian Mafia Man, AKA my brother Nick in the chat. <laughs> Hello Nick, how are you doing today? <laughs> All right, more italic things. This time the italic things, instead of being single words, they seem to be more uh, almost like crossword descriptions, like pain in the LAD region of my heart, issue with a pointy hairline. All right, let's read letter three. Dear Mr. Twist, let's cut the crap. They call me Steve Jobs because I'd hire so darn many of them. Yeah, my nickname was Mr. Dripper in high school since I sweat so much when I'm nervous. <laughs> in some circles, I'm called Annie Bennett because I grew up living quite a hard knock life. And I get called Batman since I hit every presentation out of the park. They call me Potter. They also call me Matisse's daddy for reasons I really don't know. <laughs> Thanks for your consideration. All right, last letter. Dear Mr. Kismet, I am a simple man. When I hear a rhapsody from Bohemia, I will start screaming. I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. When I see a firefly, I will sing, cause I'd get 1,000 crocs from 10,000 lightning bucks. Also, I had a cool idea for a business while eating frog legs. I'm so rich with ideas, they call me Jeff Bays or Bill G. Whoops, gotta go succumb to that temptation to list <laughs> off all my nicknames to loan officers. <laughs> These articles are hilarious. <laughs> this one, of course, is listing a lot of nicknames. Steve Jobs, Baudelaire, Annie Bennett. These are all very famous, either real people or fictional characters. And then this last one definitely seemed to be referencing songs. Like we had Bohemia Rhapsody with I'm Just a Poor Boy, Nobody Loves Me. We have Fireflies. There's a website, chicagomanualofstyle.org. Uh, well, yeah, let's take a look at the contents. Let's see what's in here. I know we had some weird punctuation stuff, probably some weird grammar for sure. There's probably a few misspelled words. I could just be taking notes of like some of these crossword clues maybe. I still think that each letter probably has its own, there might be more. There might be like a larger code that encompasses the entire page, but I'm thinking that maybe we want to first determine a code for each specific letter. Cause I still feel like it's not a coincidence that we have four letters and four lines down here. I think I'm gonna start with the italicized words in each section. Maybe I'll copy those over to a sheet and then we'll worry about some of the formatting stuff. Italic words that I'm seeing in the first letter. Misery, amazing, Columbia. I think this is all supposed to be one thing. That almost looks a lot like Tennessee. Are these all states? This looks like Amazon. 
I don't know. Let me keep getting the rest from here. We have Denial. Mrs. Hippie. Oh, Mississippi. They all sound like states. Missouri. Okay, so we have Mississippi, Missouri. I don't know. Is this Amazon? So here we have Miss Romanoff. Crawly things full of uh, venom. Sounds like it could be Spider-Man, right? Columbia and the Nile are rivers. Oh, these are all rivers. Mississippi River, Missouri River. Yeah, Amazon River is a river. Okay. Good catch on that one. Uh, Dagummit. Pointy hairline is Widow's Peak, like Black Widow. Oh, are these all spider references? So we gotta look up what this pain in the LAD region of the heart is. Oh, uh, Widowmaker Heart Attack is the first thing that came up. Crawly things full of venom. This could just be Black Widow. All right, on to letter three. This is the one that references a lot of people. So we have Steve Jobs, Baudelaire's, Batman. Potter, I'm assuming, is a reference to Harry Potter. They're all orphans. Oh, they're all orphans, says Christopher from space. You're right. I didn't know Steve Jobs or Oliver Twist was an orphan, but that sounds promising. Maybe each set clues a single word. That's a good idea. So we maybe have River, Widow, and Orphan. That's possible. Let's go to letter four and see what we see in letter four. Four. We have, oh, and this is the one that was a lot of songs. Bohemia, Firefly, Maple Leaf. That's a rag song, isn't it? Like Maple Leaf Rag. Widows and Orphans are in the style guide, says Phil the Hat. I don't see it in the table of contents. Let me specifically search Chicago Manual of Style Widow. Oh, wait, here's something. A widow is a paragraph ending line that falls at the beginning of the following page. So this is a widow here, yeah, where a paragraph runs and then ends at the top there. That's really interesting. I think at least this is what a widow is. Let me check what an orphan is. A paragraph's opening line, so I think it's just the opposite, but an opening line that appears by itself at the bottom of the page, thus separating it from the rest of the text. Let's take a look here. Let's start with our uh, widows, so the ending of a paragraph that starts at the top. Pablo's gloomy period featuring the old guitarist. Pablo's gloomy period featuring the old guitarist. That sounds like a clue. Pablo Picasso painted the old guitarist. And is that his blue period? It's it's a blue painting. Um, I'm guessing, yeah, known as his blue period. There we go, we, we did one. I'm thinking blue is the partial answer for this section of the text. I was right about my guess on letter four. Oh, with rag. Are they all rags? Cool. Let me do let me do orphan first, and uh, then I'll get to the other two. So somewhere around 1907 to 1908, the kiss, the famous one, made with this kind of leaf. The kiss is an oil painting with added silver and gold leaf. All right, but I think gold is our important word here. Mississippi. Okay, back to our rivers. So you said the river is something. In typography, rivers are gaps in typesetting which appear to run through a paragraph of text due to a coincidental alignment of spaces. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, these are so satisfying. I see these sometimes. Okay, so we're looking for rivers of spaces like that. Oh, right here. Oh, yeah, straight down. Straight down right there. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out like what are we extracting here? To ask Nis loan. It's not just the letters, is it? Like Oz Oz Gag. Okay, new new idea. Let's look at the letter that is immediately below the river. So like this river goes all the way down here and we get an E between us and no in paragraph two. Oh yeah, you're right. Maybe the letter or the whole word. Whole word, whole word makes a lot of sense too. Immediately following, yeah, that sounds promising. Immediately following, I think dessert, yeah. Matisse's, immediately following dessert in Matisse's Red Room. Let's see what Matisse's Red Room is. Harmony in Red or Red Room is a painting by Henry Matisse. So Harmony, Harmony is the answer here. The, the full name of the painting is the dessert Harmony in Red, at least according to this source. So immediately following dessert is the word harmony. Um, so we had rag. Are these all, did we confirm these are all rags? Yeah, the firefly rag is a thing. Okay, so let me go to rag in typography. In typography, rag refers to the irregular or uneven vertical margin of a block of type. Let's take a look at the rags of our post. Okay, so there's definitely a rag here, right? Jack me denial. 
I don't know, is it a bad rag if it's the last word of a, of a sentence? So I'm taking Jack for sure. The Jack the Dripper. All right, that sounds like another clue. Let's look up Jack the Dripper for Pollock. Oh, it's his nickname. Harmony in blue and gold nickname. Okay, let's look up Harmony in blue and gold. Nickname looks like it's the Peacock Room. So I think we're going to try the Peacock Room. Solved, the Peacock Room is correct. Waluigi thought his newspaper business would go from rags to riches, but no one reads newspapers anymore. Duh. All right, let's take a look at another puzzle. Ugh, wasp keeping. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. This is one of the four or five cans of wasp spray that I have scattered around my house. So um, we're going to keep this nice and close as we solve this puzzle. <laughs> All right, here's the wasp keeping puzzle. Copy of spreadsheet available opens a new tab. Always sum correctly, it's important. Okay, so we have hex, it looks like. We have hex in, in hexagons. Don't tell me this is math, this is mythical. Italian Mafia Man, yay, math. So I get the basic idea of the solve, I think, right? We just add the rows and the, the multiple columns to get the things on the outside. We're gonna have to put in hex digits as well as a plus. But then the question becomes, what is extraction? Okay, so everything over here is reading across. Everything around here is reading down and to the left. And then everything down here is reading up into the left. Italian Mafia Man agrees with edges first. Since they can't have a plus, since there'd be nothing to plus. Oh, smart. Oh, that's crazy smart. I wonder how long it would have taken me to see that. <laughs> Tap me in, coach. I'll uh, I'll call you up if you're if you actually want to be part of this. All right, Nick's joining in on the call here, aka Italian Mafia Man. Uh, he was watching the stream and thought this puzzle looked fun, so he decided to jump on the voice chat. Um, again, Nick's my brother. For anybody who hasn't uh, seen a stream with Nick on it before, we usually do um, puzzled pints together. The C5942432. I have a feeling about that one, Anthony, that this right above the F and the D is going to be a plus, and I feel like it has to be. At eight digits, and you got 10 cells crossing that. So the only way you can do it is if you put a plus in that F and D one. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think you're probably right. All right, it looks like we have a hex calculator here. C5942432. Minus F gives us C5942423. Um, so another one I noticed that's really long is this one here. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Eight digits and 10 spaces. So yeah, you're right. We got to split that into an eight digit thing and a one digit thing. Yeah, because if we put the plus over here. Yeah. Where like in front of the five, then this two would be an issue. Yeah, it'd be a D instead. Okay, okay. so I agree. Uh, you got to put your plus there. Okay, so that let me do five B. Let me go to my hex calculator. I'm going to do <laughs> five b 94 a 4 and we're going to subtract 5 we get fb 949 f so that would be bad because we end with a b here so instead we want to put the plus here we get 5b 9499 they, they probably really understand why i was so eager to join yeah everybody shares your enthusiasm for <laughs> obscure math logic puzzles <laughs> I think I want to highlight maybe letters or something. Or maybe we're, maybe we need to compare the two grids at the end. Is that what we're doing? And there's going to be little differences or something? Or similarities. Okay, so what I want to do first, we finished the puzzles, we're on to extraction now. 
And the first thing that I want to do is assemble a quick formula thing down here. I want to do, I want to see where these are equal. Okay, yeah. so these are the cells where things are the same. Um, we have a bunch of two and three did or two and four digit things. Uh, anything that's yielding values of fours and fives are for everything looks very like ASCII. Yeah, they do all start with fours and fives, don't they? That's a good idea, Steven. 40C is an L. 40F is an O. 54 is T. 40F is an O. And then 52 is R. Blow up director. That's so a little aggressive. We just gotta blow up the director. Uh, let's see, is blow up a movie? Blow up is a movie. Michelangelo Antonioni. It's correct. Wario asked Waluigi why he had gotten all these wasps. Be gone, demons. Tiny buzzing demons. Waluigi shrugged. Don't people like wasps? Isn't it trendy to keep them for honey these days? Wario put his head in his hand. Bro. That's bees. <laughs> I think we're gonna end it there for today. Oh, thank you for allowing me to join. Yeah, way. Nick, thank you for I'm... joining us. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and as always, happy escaping. Mm -hmm.